our first look at Canada. And the border guard. We're in, finally in Canada now and I had to stop and take a picture of this guy's upstairs apartment. I don't know how you get in, but it's cute. We've stopped at a roadside picnic area in Ontario. There seem to be a lot of these, but uh, one about every 30 or 40 kilometers. They have uh, heavy-duty trash cans, picnic benches, well-maintained, often at a scenic point. In Ontario, according to this sticker, I'm paying 13% something HST tax, 10 cents per liter federal excise tax, and 14.7 cents per liter provincial gasoline tax. It's about four liters in a gallon, so multiply that times four. I paid about $20 in taxes today, over and above what I would have normally paid in the states for the same amount of gasoline. But then again, the health care is free. see plenty of bicyclists like this along the way quite a number of them every few minutes every 15 20 minutes most have heavy duty packs on their their bike is loaded down so that they're going cross country uh, these guys are traveling light probably just on a day trip or even less we're in Ontario tonight we're going to uh, stop at a monument to the 49th parallel this is the line that uh, separates most of Canada from the United States along the western states. But here in Ontario there's uh, still a couple of hundred miles of the Canada still south of us. So we're north of the uh, United States line by a fair amount. I've noticed this in other places up north. You've got a full-blown shopping center over here with all the traffic and everything separated by a high hill, obviously man-made, and on this side a residential area. And it's a very effective barrier. You would never know what's on the other side. Of course the hill uses up land, of which there isn't much of in LA. All of you have seen trucks pulling trailers, but this guy is pulling two trailers. Two standard length trailers normally pulled behind two trucks or two tractors because of the long distances involved in this uh, part of the country and little cross traffic and etc etc obviously this is legal up here there's been experiments with pulling triples uh, but they were given up as too dangerous the load is just too heavy now in the province of Manitoba we're in Winnipeg Manitoba where we'll be visiting uh, Fort Gibraltar this Fort Gibraltar is a reproduction. It's really not a military fort. There was no military here to speak of, but it's rather a fur trading area. They would hire men, bring them out here. The men would be sent out to trap beaver, as, uh, Arctic fox, that sort of thing. And then they would uh, also send men out in the other direction to trade with the other trading posts, bring in uh, materials from England, uh, cloth, that sort of thing. Oh, don't forget the tea. Glass was very expensive back then. I'm going to have to ask them if they actually had glass windows. We ship to, you know, the Hudson Bay Company, all the stuff comes in from the Hudson Bay through the ships. Well, they, they, they were able to bring big, you know, the big barrels you saw outside there. Be the store master, I guess. Yeah. I would, uh, you know, the natives bring in the furs, I grade them, I give them uh, a value. There's no money out here. No coins or paper. The currency is beaver. Say this is the storehouse, but it's made up, filled up with the trading goods, you say. All right. The, the country, the province that uh, they could. Uh, they could speak the language, it's French, they could learn the language, they could uh, go to church. But with only one side, and it has two handles. Uh, we put the piece of wood in here, press down on this uh, plank there, and it keeps it in place. Uh, and then 
back and start working on it. This shit away. Now, if I was uh, if I was to start from scratch, I would have had a square. Uh, water, don't worry. A little nip. I wish it was on the off, but no. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Great. What are we doing? There's Hello. one right there. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good, and you? Oh, I'm trying to keep busy. Uh, that is trying to be busy keeping cool. Uh huh. On a day like today. On the, on the spit here and potatoes over the fire so we have all this metal here was made in the forge <coughs> by our blacksmith who's unfortunately absent today. And they would cook outdoors mostly? Well yeah especially in the summer because it's way too hot to cook in there. Somebody goes to the trouble of building this fine piece of architecture and then somebody else goes to the trouble of building this across the street. I thought I was back in LA for a minute. Can you see the crack running down the front of this building? Drive 500 meters, then turn left. Off to the side here we have a pedestrian bridge, which is the only purpose other than the pedestrians is to have a restaurant. On Canada Highway number one, also known as the Trans-Canadian Highway, I assume that's because it goes from coast to coast. It's the largest highway in the, uh, the country. I believe it's the only highway of any consequence, which is uh, four lanes uh, separated. We've left Canada number one for number 16. Uh, we'll be headed now in a northerly direction as, as well as west, and uh, obviously a two-lane road. We're out in the prairie area again of the continent. We're at a wayside park in Manitoba. Let's see if we can get this well cranked up. Oops, no handle on it to crank. But obviously it used to be the source of water for the park. There is none now, I guess. We've stopped to uh, camp overnight at a city park. We're very near the um, provincial line between Manitoba and Saskatchewan. I had mentioned uh, earlier about the uh, Canadian Highway, that we were on Canadian Highway 1 and then on Highway 16. Uh, highway 1, of course, running uh, east to west. It's a trans-Canadian highway, and 16 is uh, a north-south highway. Um, and it's just the opposite of the United States, where the uh, um, U.S. Highway Number 1 runs up and down the east coast, north to south, and Highway 101 on the west coast in the same directions. Canadians like to do things a little bit differently, certainly differently from what we do in the United States. It reminded me when uh, my wife and I were in Vancouver in uh, 1995, and the Queen's birthday was coming up, and it was apparent that the whole town was pretty well going to shut down for the Queen's birthday. And we were commenting to a clerk in the store that we were at, there was nobody else in there, so we struck up a conversation uh, about the different holidays in the two countries. Uh, for instance, so we had President's Day instead of the Queen's Holiday. Uh, we had uh, Thanksgiving in November instead of October. Uh, the various other holidays that uh, we had commented on, I don't think they even uh, um, celebrate, or for want of a better word, celebrate uh, Halloween, or at least it isn't the holiday that we make it out to be. And I, being a smart aleck, as I often am, uh, commented to her, well, what about Christmas? Is that on the same day? And in all seriousness, she said, we'd change it if we could. Pause for laughter, I hope. <laughs>